there are five crucial people, i.e. the five right-wing billionaires who own our media. But these are the biggest blockage to action on the climate crisis in Britain. We've committed to being here for a 48-hour vigil. So we'll be here, we will camp overnight. It's a small protest, but it's here as a symbolic. It's here as in to symbolize and really confront these people with the deaths. The 400,000 UN Senate has died this year from climate, directly from climate change. But the six million people worldwide who are dying from fossil fuel, combustion pollution. Stop the climate denial of the five media billionaires. Read all about it. The mainstream media are by and large owned by very large and powerful corporations and individuals. And the messages that they put out reflect those interests of the rich and powerful rather than those of the people. At uh, four o'clock today, uh, the leader of the Green Party, Natalie Bennett, and a representative from Occupy the Daily Mail, I'm a crisis vigil. I've been invited in to have a discussion with the managing director and their chief uh, environmental correspondent to discuss Daily Mail's editorial line on climate crisis. So here's an example of um, coverage the Daily Mail provided around the Arctic ice extent or the ice cap. There was an uptick last year where the ice extent expanded back. Um, the Daily Mail misrepresented the data, which shows an overall decrease. And their headline was, now it's global calling. The ice cap grows by 29% in a year. And that's really ignoring the wider context of the, the science. And this uh, headline really supports the Daily Mail narrative of ignoring climate change. The people who devise these narratives do so with utter cynicism, representing the interests of a tiny minority of people. Um, and it's not just our fuel bills that are going up in smoke, it's also the planet. And that's why it must be challenged. What will matter is not what was seen in there, but what appears on the pages of the Daily Mail in the coming days, weeks and months, particularly leading up to the Paris Climate Talks. This is not just about selling papers or not selling papers. It's not about being on, on lobbyists for the oil industry or not. This is a conscience issue. You've been talking about you know, the deaths due to climate change, <coughs> you know, the deaths due to you know, the related issue of um, air pollution related particularly to the internal combustion engine. Uh, report these stories, report these human stories, because the human stories are very definitely there, and they can then help inform people's understanding of the science. He said he promised that um, he has, this has been shown to all of the, the workers in the Daily Mail. The, um, they have seen the, our version of the Occupy Daily Mail, and they have seen our demands, and he said he would communicate this with Paul Dacker. He undertook to reply to the accusations that non-scientific people are being quoted as scientists and non-scientific papers are being quoted as not peer-reviewed. He undertook to come back on that. It may sound like a small commitment. If we can make this one stick and we can undermine Lord Moncton's access to this building, um, that would be a significant achievement. But Lord Moncton is one of the globe's most prominent climate skeptics. Human nature is, 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 is always um, keyed to resist change. And we have to say the house is on fire and we need to change fast.